going to go ahead and get started and uh, inshallah as others join us um, we'll allow them to continue to listen and um, if they're not able to join us they'll be able to access this recording later. Um, as a reminder uh, we'll have an opportunity for um, questions and whatnot throughout the session but please keep yourself on mute and then use the chat function um, whenever there are opportunities to do so. Uh, as a reminder, this is our last session out of four. Um, alhamdulillah, we've uh, been able to learn a lot through these last few sessions, and inshallah, you'll be able to continue to take these lessons forward. Um, these lessons or these workshops have been sponsored by ABSA, the Ahlul Bayt Student Association. If you want more information about them, you can go to absanetwork.com. Um, Dr. Kianpour has very graciously offered that if any of the participants would like to get in touch with him after these workshops, you can do so via email or via WhatsApp. I've put his contact information into the chat box, so you can um, go ahead and copy that down. I will share it again at the end of the session. You can um, get in touch by either emailing him or sending him a message on WhatsApp. Um, so, inshallah, with that, I will hand it over to Dr. Kianpur, who can uh, introduce the content for today. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Zainab. Uh, I will start, inshallah, by reciting some verses of Quran, and then uh, we go ahead and uh, review the content of the last session, inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سورة أنزلناها وفرزناها وأنزلنا فيها آيات بينات لعلكم تذكرون الزانية والزاني فاجلدوا كل واحد منهما مع تجلة ولا تأخذكم بحما رعفة في دين الله إن كنتم تؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر وليشهد أذاب حما تائفة من المؤمنين الزاني لا ينكه إلا زانية أو مشركة والزانية لا ينكهها إلا زان أو مشرك وحرم ذلك على المؤمنين والذين يرمون المحسنات ثم لم يأتوا بأربعة الشهداء فاجلدهم ثمانين جلدة ولا تقبلوا لهم شهادة عبدا وأولئك هم الفاسقون إلا الذين تابوا من بعد ذلك وأسلحوا فإن الله غفور رحيم صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد Okay. Um Allah min shaitan illa inna rajeem. Okay, just need to share my slides. Hope that everyone can see my slides. Can I just try to maximize a little bit more. So today is the last session of uh, marriage workshop. Uh, with this session, we have had so far four sessions and uh, uh, we reviewed uh, a few steps starting with uh, self-identification and review some steps that you could take in order to be more familiar familiarized with yourself and the qualities or characteristics that you have and then uh, we went through some uh, uh, measures uh, to see how you can uh, identify those ex expectations that you have of the marriage and your uh, prospective spouse and to 
also make a comparison between those and your parents and uh, and with your family to see to to get to know more of yourself and then we reviewed uh, some uh, information regarding purpose of session and the mainly the questions that uh, uh, I thought that might be beneficial and useful for you and uh, during the Q&A sessions the last two Q&A sessions I just tried to review all those questions um, to have uh, to clarify some of those and uh, to have more discussions regarding those questions to in order to help you to better understand the person that you are trying to get to know and today in the last session uh, inshallah yeah inshallah we uh, gonna cover communicate effective communication uh, which is uh, the phase after inshallah you get married and uh, inshallah this session helps you to when you get to the process you get married and uh, you're just uh, you know in terms of like the type of behaviors and relationship and communication that you have with your spouse what you can do to maintain that compassion to maintain that type of love exists between you in order to have a long-lasting relationship and marriage inshallah so um, communication is a uh, is a very key element in a successful re relationship because uh, the way that we treat each other in just regardless of marriage in any type of relationships for example at the workplace with your colleague the type of relationship that you have the communication that you have with your colleagues is very determinant um, I heard like uh, in some places even in like a uh, high um, uh, the type of academic jobs or like if you want to go to work in a government like in high level of uh, like a government jobs um, it's very interesting I just heard it from someone who work in like in government in Canada and even in the US for a long time he was uh, saying that uh, when they want to hire someone they look for the type of the the personality that you have and the way that you communicate with your colleagues in the workplace they give a little little bit of values to the skills that you have and what you are just trying to bring to the workplace because they know that they can spend some money to educate you during the first couple of months or year of your career and get you you know equipped or give you enough skill through all those training and, and education that can help uh, to do your job but the main key for them is the way that you communicate with your colleagues and the type of atmosphere that exists in in that like office or the department and what you do in that you know situation in that like environment if you are a good match with uh, or if you are a good fit in in that uh, like uh, context or not it is very very important for them that the way that you communicate so and it's true with some other like context even in the context of the family the way that your parents communicate with each other really directly affect you as a person and uh, the context that you are growing up in uh, that type of context that is made by the nature of the communication that your parents uh, have had in in that context it made you that person that you are now and uh, even with your friends the type of communications that you you have with your friends if this uh, type of communication is a good communication is a good one is a functional one you can sustain all those friends that you have otherwise you may be you know gradually rejected by all those friends or or like uh, you, you may attract those friends 
who communicate in a way that you do. So it's really determinant the way that you communicate. And uh, <clears throat> so the, the type of the intimate communication that we have is usually within the spouse, with other spouses and the families. So the intimate communication is, might be like a different from like a general communication that you have at the workplace. So that one is very important too. Uh, you may heard of, uh, uh, might hear like a, a, there's a hadith from um, like a story like during the Prophet Muhammad that um, someone, one of the Sahaba, one of the followers of uh, Payambar Salawatullah uh, died and uh, and uh, Prophet Muhammad just went to the cemetery to do the you know the the ritual things and uh, put him in the grave, and uh, and he, and he, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that I could see that like thousands of angels who are coming and just uh, doing the ritual like the funeral with us, and but as soon as we put him in the grave, like those angels from the hell came, and uh, now now that person is not like really happy or comfortable in his grave and the other followers asked why and prophet muhammad said uh, because his communication or his behaviors with his families was not as good as the type of communication that he had in the public arena so so it shows that how this type of communication that we have with our families and spouse and kids and everyone in our families, like a type of intimate communication that we have, it's very, very important. And inshallah, we can work on the type of communication that we have in order to be blessed and uh, pave the path towards Jannah, inshallah. Okay, I'm gonna uh, directly go to the four horsemen of the apocalypse uh, so if you go if you just search for horsemen of apocalypse it's um, like uh, some verses or kind of a story about the the end of the world or apocalypse as it is illustrated the way that it's illustrated in new testament um um, so I don't like uh, I don't want to talk about that, but the the type of things like the, the four type of behaviors or communication that I want to illustrate it here, it's a really good um, synonym of good synonym for the four horsemen of the apocalypse. So, and these are the outcome of the researches that Dr. Gottman did in University of Washington in Seattle. And uh, it's really, uh, and it's based on like uh, interviewing like uh, more than like a uh, thousands of couple, couples through like uh, more than 30 years. So they are all based on uh, scientific information and studies and really reliable and trustable. So the first one is criticism. The, what like the couples usually do with each other is a type of the criticism that they have. And the second one is the contempt, like the way that they do the contempt and treat the partner disrespectfully or ridicule the person like the spouse. And defensiveness is another type of like a self-protection in order to protect ourselves from the attack or whatever that we receive through that type of communication or relationship and a stonewalling. So I'm gonna go through all these four uh, communication styles and uh, to see what they are. So crit criticism it is, seems like uh, you, for example, like uh, you uh, illustrate your uh, or you state your complaint as an attack to, to your spouse or to, to other person or whoever is in the relationship. And what you hear in that type of communication is that, okay, so if you are saying that, if you are just trying to attack me and you are saying that I'm perfect, so 
I would say the, re the response that you hear is that, okay, so you are not so perfect either. So you like, uh, like trying to say that I'm pretty close to perfect, but you are defective. So you are, I'm perfect, uh, you are defective, and uh, I'm all good, but you are all bad. But the type of the, you know, the attack that we do uh, against our spouse. So, and it's usually criticism usually leading to an escalation of the conflict. It's, it doesn't fix anything. It's just getting worse and worse, the type of the, the conflict that you have. So, and so the criticism might not be a good way of communicating with anyone, specifically with our spouse. If we see any type of, you know, bad behaviors or uh, the type of behaviors that we don't like, uh, probably is better to start with the positive aspect of that person and then uh, go through that behavior and talk about that behavior in a better manner and without blaming that person. So a good antidote for criticism is to complain without blame. We don't need to blame someone or... Um, and then we can just talk about like, you know, uh, positive aspect of that person or positive behaviors that person has uh, without blaming. And uh, like a use gentle start off, like the way that we start and we talk about that type of negative behaviors that we see and we don't like. We can just, you know, be gentle and be nice at the beginning and then gradually talk about like that negative behavior that we don't like and we can conversation about it without you know attacking someone without blaming someone so it's about the criticism and the second one is contempt it's the way that we just try to you know mocking and acting superior to to other person when we we contempt someone it means that we put ourselves in a, a superior position and just try to put that person in an inferior position. And from top, we can just, you know, attack or start criticizing that person by condemning that person, by belittling that person and the behavior that he or she has. So in contempt, based on the Dr. Gottman's research, is the best predictor of divorce. So among all, among many of those couples who got divorced, contempt is a is a uh, high frequent type of behaviors that they have. So, and because there is no, they they do not provide any room for respect when they contempt each other. So there is no respect in that type of communication or relationship. And respect is the thing that all people are looking for in any type of relationship. If I, if I be in a relationship that I don't see any respect, I'm going to leave that relationship. And you, you in any type, like if you at work, in, in your workplace, if you feel that you are not respected and you are not appreciated for what you are doing, you're going to leave that. If you have a friend that you think that that type of relationship that you have with that friend is not respectful and you are not appreciated for, for who you are, you're going to leave that relationship. It's just the same as marriage. So if you see that you are not appreciated, you are not respected, because lots of, you know, legal issues involve in marriage, so it's, it probably is kind of difficult to leave, but you... But in, in that type of relationship or marriage, it's really difficult to tolerate any type of disrespectful. And you may look for any way to, to run away by some people because of like the, those legal issues involved and make it difficult to divorce. Like specifically with like kids, there are lots of people who just make themselves so busy with work, as we call them, like, sometimes like working 18 hours a day like through the 24 hours and spend most most of their time at their workplace um, like we we call them like for if they have like some specific criteria as, as workaholic or those who are, who are like alcoholic 
and uh, like they they do they go through you know they go to to uh, like a drink a lot for example at the bar or they use some opioids you know or they might be get involved in some type of, uh, of the, you know extramarital relationships and they spend their time with you know outside of that relation outside of the marriage because they don't feel that they are respected or appreciated in 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 their relationship with their uh, spouse so it is very important to uh, to keep in mind that respect is very important in any type of relationship specifically uh, in marriage um, yeah so the an antidote we already talked like respect and build a uh, culture of appreciation and uh, provide uh, create a situation or context in which that we feel like the other person feel that is appreciated uh, the third um, type of communication is uh, defensiveness it's a, uh, a it's a type of a behavior that you just try not to take any responsibility for part of the problem like a problem or conflict happen and you just try to you know run away you just try to do not take any responsibility any small like uh, even like a very small portion of that problem and it's this is a defensiveness. Um, you just try to take your guard um, to receiving any criticism or any like advice or anything like rather than like criticism, like anything. You don't want to take any responsibility and just push put the all the burden of all that problem on the shoulder of the other person. So and and the antidote for this uh like a defensiveness is to take responsibility even for a small part of the problem and kicking around the problem as a team because you are like a the partners like couples they are friends they should be friends they should work as a team to work on the problems or any conflict that happen in in their relationship so if they work with each other as a team on that problem and take the responsibility for that problem and don't say that okay so you you created that problem and this is your business not mine you take care of it you're gonna solve it and i gonna like just sit outside and watch you so this is not the way that marriage works so and any problem or anything that happened in the marriage uh, both parties should be involved and take responsibility and do not use the defensiveness and uh, a stonewalling uh, is a type of behavior that uh, like around I think it's around like 80 more than 80 percent of this type of behavior is done by by men that these are men who usually use stonewalling and uh, because they don't want to uh, make that problem worth they just uh, prefer to be silent and do nothing and do not get involved into that problem like they don't listen and they don't answer to anything and uh, they are just silent so because they don't want to make that worse but uh, it, it is exactly has the like opposite effect it means that it makes that worse and uh, and uh, with, you know, withdrawing to to avoid the conflict, it can lead to very destructive pattern of like being silent and and that person, the the other person, uh, may feel that his his or she's not listened or is not like answered like all those questions or whatever that she or he has not heard or not listened. So and it create like a type of uh frustration and uh like a like a in a long term like a type of depression in another person and it just deteriorate the relationship so probably a good antidote for stonewalling is uh psychological se uh, self soothing it means that uh you just try to be away from that context that you are in just for a few minutes like uh, 20 minutes 30 minutes 
and make yourself busy with something else that you think that you can like be a little bit away from the anxiety that you had in that context and uh, make yourself and your mind busy with something else and then again come back to that context come back to your partner or your spouse and talk about the problem and issue just try to make yourself like uh like uh, calm first and then again get back to the problem get back to your partner and spouse and talk about the problem and issue um, so these are the four horsemen of apocalypse which is uh which are very um can be deteriorating for the relationship and all those antidotes you know just when we know that the type of this type of communication if we can identify those type of communication for example i identify myself as someone who criticizes a lot so i need to look for like those antidotes and work on myself to do not criticize in my relationship and do not like point to those negative behaviors by blaming my uh, spouse and um, or work on my startup like the way that i start to talk about you know start up talk about the the issue that i don't like the type of negative behavior that i don't like in my spouse or the content like uh, for example i identify myself as someone who do lots of content so what can i do to to fix it to do not do the content or the like defensiveness or the stonewalling so it's very important to if we can identify ourselves with uh, like any of those uh, communication style in ourselves and work on them um, so in general we can say like the common communication problems we can like categorize them in these type of uh, categories here for example not listening or responding to the issue at hand so it's a type of stonewalling blaming criticizing and nagging it's a type of exactly like criticism like the first uh, horseman of apocalypse a scapegoating and aggression like uh, it is a time that we blame some something else we just trying to victimize something else instead of the the main issue and and uh, and, uh, and waste our time deviate from the right path and work and you know focus on something else um, repression and denial just denial of the, the problem or coercion or contempt as we talk about it in the, the second uh, four horsemen or silent treatment is it like a it is a it's a type of the stonewalling so we talk about like those communication problems and um, and now is, is uh, good to talk about the effective communication and see that how uh, we can develop some ways to interact with our spouse in a positive way. So which is not which which should be clear, not non-judgmental or punitive. So these are the best way that we can communicate with our spouse. You know we should we need to develop those ways to be clear in the communication that we have if we want to point out to something else that we don't like we don't need to go around that issue we just can like directly talk about the issue that we want to talk and be clear about our intention and um, and the problem that we want to talk about we don't need to judge the person our spouse for the thing that he or he has, has done so um before before clearly talking about about that issue we shouldn't judge that person and also non-punitive we don't want to you know um put a lot of burden on that person or just punish that person because what I, what what he has she uh what he or she has done um but, so that that's not a way that we you know should communicate with the spouse or with the, with our partner and also resolving conflict through pro problem sol solving rather than coercion or manipulation so in order to get uh our benefits uh or like 
change that person in a way that we want we need to just work on the problem and look for like as a team as together look for some ways that we can solve that problems instead of gain our benefit through you know this process so and uh, like uh, effective communication can you know convey uh, conveys what a person or others feel like the the intention that you have the emotions that you have they are all involved in the effective communication so and it can like uh, establish atmosphere of trust and honesty that can solve the uh, the conflict or at least decrease the conflict so that's very important that through the effective communication, we can establish that type of context or atmosphere of trust that uh, the two person can trust each other, and work on the, the problem and find um, uh, a way to solve that problem. So uh, another effective communication is self-disclosure and the second one is validation so I talk about the validation first briefly and then go through the self-disclosure validation is just show the respect for a person who has different opinion or point of view you for example regarding a conflict or problem that happened in the relationship the two parties might have like different ideas so someone who do not validate that person who wants to just manipulate that person or change that person to comes in a way that he or she wants or change that person to gain his or her own benefits or interests out of that like problems or something that happened but validation means that I respect that person and I admire and I just respect that person's point of view regarding that issue and do not try to change that person. So for some conflict or some issues, you might not have uh, like the same ideas. So, so just we need to look for, a, look for a way to compromise or to find a way to solve that problem. Or probably we need to just compromise and just look over that issue and, uh, and uh, find other ways to see how we can like be in the same boat about some other issues. So it's very important to listen and uh, respect other person's uh, opinion and do not try to manipulate that person or change that person, try to change that person to gain our own interest or benefits. Um, so self-disclosure also is very uh, key elements in uh, effective communication. So uh, self-disclosure means that I just tell my spouse or uh, that about myself and about my thoughts and about my feelings and emotion and expect that a type of truly open communication comes after so because whenever that i self disclose disclosure or you do disclose your thoughts or emotion with someone you are expecting that the open communication will follow after or you know comes after and that person also does some self disclosure and you both together build up a trust and then work on the problem that you have or just try to have a type of communication that you can trust each other more and you know tie to that type of uh, emotional attachment that you have with each other but some people might afraid of doing that because uh, they don't know if they are going to get uh, a, like a negative feedback or positive feedback or because it's very risky and even some partners like uh, like uh, husbands and wives usually avoid due to self-disclosure they just may prefer to keep all those emotions or thoughts that they have regarding like different issues and do not disclose them mainly because they are afraid of information power they feel that if I disclose that person has that information power that has power and information and maybe in the future use them against me so it is very important to make sure that this is a reciprocal process if i disclose 
I should expect that that another person also disclose and and build up that trust already and just make sure make sure that those information are not is not used in the future against uh, us so that's very important but if if it used properly it has lots of positive consequences and outcomes for the relationship um, so for example some of the benefits is this team support the person who disclosed and is it's supported regarding specifically regarding an issue that that person might have some an anxiety around that issue it helps that person to get enough you know regain that type of uh, uh, self-confidence or confidence that might be lost during that like conflict or issue or whatever that happened uh, and information support like uh, that another person can provide some information for the person who disclosed to to have a better idea about the context context or the situation that he or she or they might be stuck in and instrumental support for example I express my emotions and disclose my emotion regarding the chores in, in the home and would say there are lots of work to do it in this home. I need to take care of my son. I need to take care of my daughter. I need to do a lots of shopping and I see that these are all the burden like a marital burden and I cannot focus on or concentrate on my own issues and it's very difficult to handle all those issues. So and and my wife may come and say, okay, so we need to have like, a, uh, there are some of the tasks or chores I can do to take off some of those burdens. For example, I go for the grocery. You need to go for grocery. You can stay here at home or you can stay longer at your office and take care of your uh, like uh, workplace issues. You know, this is a type of instrumental support or motivational support. If that person like my wife cannot support me with information or instrument, she like might like encourage me or give me some motivation or provide me with some, you know, emotional support in order to get motivated again to keep going in, uh, in uh, like in life or whatever that you are doing. So self-disclosure is very important. It's a, like a, like a uh, has a two edges and it's very difficult to walk on the edge. So um, at the one hand, you it has a lots of benefits, and another side is like uh, very risky, and you need to have that trust already to do this risk and you know do the self-disclosure. Uh, and successful marriage successful marriage has like uh, a couple of uh, characteristics um, that I'm going to share some of those with you here like compatibility is uh, uh, is very important like in which areas you are compatible with, with each other so and this the first one like compatibility uh uh, can can gain can be gained through those questions that I share with you uh, through the proposal sessions. So these are very important questions that the information that you gain about your spouse or someone who you are just trying to get to know, and at the end that marriage happen. So. It's very really important the the way that you approach marriage, you approach that person and try to get to know that. If you do not, you know, follow that process and get and uh, and uh, and then marry someone who's not compatible with you in like uh, in future, like gradually after a couple of months, like specifically in the first couple of months, you can see that because you're gonna live with that person, you're gonna know that there are lots of differences that you are not compatible with each other like specifically all those 
uh, personality traits, the way that you think, the, the way that you worship, the way that you, you know, analyze like issues around yourself, uh, around the lots of stuff, like even uh, like uh, the values, for example, that you have, you know, attitudes that you have, the all those stuff that uh, can sustain the relationship. Some people um, I talk about it like uh, we hear a lot uh, when you try to introduce someone to um, another one, specifically for men, when you introduce um, um, a sister to, to a brother to get to know each other for the purpose of marriage. The first thing that uh, specifically men uh, see and say is that may I have like the picture of that person and uh, they judge that person they even before uh, initiate the conversation or ask to okay so can we have like get connected to each other link to each other and s start talking they judge and say okay so I don't want to talk to that like that sister just because of the picture just because of the all those physical uh characteristics and they do not they don't want i don't know they do not look into all those personality uh characteristics or qualities uh, so lots of researchers have shown that uh some of the relationships uh are initiated by the physical through the physical uh, attraction and they start that relationship based on those physical uh, qualities but those qualities that sustain the relationships is a similar attitudes attitudes values and beliefs so and also similar social background like ethnicity religion and education that uh, they have uh, I talk about like some of those uh, issues um, in the last couple of sessions about the compatibility, like um, same level of education, religion, and uh, ethnicity also. So it's very important to uh, point out to those uh, similar characteristics that we have, and also personality characteristics that we have, to have a higher level of compatibility in order to have a long-lasting marriage, inshallah. And flexibility is very important like uh, specifically at the time of conflicts or you know disagreements there are those who are flexible they are just trying to compromise and see the issues from another person's eyes in order rather than just change that person to gain their own benefits or interest so flexibility is very important positive attitudes so like the way that they look each other instead of like being uh, like, you know, ha having like a net neg negative point of view, negative like perspective toward the issue and the person or do not have, for example, trust or some other issues that may, you know, cause, you know, can like uh, make that problem worse. They have like, uh, those happy couples they have positive attitudes toward the problems toward each other and toward life in general and communication and conflict resolution the key ingredient for marital success we talk about the communication and conflict resolution and emotional support the type of support that they provide with each other like specifically emotional support is very important even much more important than like a romance or whatever that they have specifically at the beginning of marriage. That type of emotional support just make that person understand that he or she is heard, listened, and understood. It's a very key point, uh, specifically at the time of conflict. So uh, we just have 10 minutes to uh, head to the end of this session. I have like a, just one slide regarding relationship with in-laws. So just quickly go through my point here and uh, 
just leave some uh, a few minutes if you have any questions or to, or like addressing some other issues inshallah because today is the last session and uh, inshallah we're gonna see uh, so relationship uh, with in-laws is very important so because usually women play a central role in family relationships and specifically for mother-in-laws mother-in-laws the husband's mother uh, because they used to have a central role in their son's life and now that uh, their son got married with someone else they feel that they are losing that type of control that they had in the life of their sons and someone else is taking is taking over that uh, role and it might be like very difficult for them and just try to interfere or you know have some comments and uh, do something that both parties specifically uh, the son's wife doesn't like and it can create some problem for for the couple um, and um, so and uh, and also generational differences like um, like uh, after the birth of a grandchild the way uh, the new couple they do want to have their own parenting and the type of parenting of their grandpas or grandparents they feel that they are all kind of old-fashioned and also some of them might not be interested in those uh, like their parents or grandparents advises because because they they experienced those advices those type of parenting when they were a kid and they don't want to impose that type of parenting on their own children so and it can create some problems or for example a man if get advice from his wife's uh, parents might see those advices or comments or whatever that he sees a type of uh, like uh, feel that they are interfering in the parenting or or his own life with his uh, kids and it can like create like some problems so it's very important to be aware of all those uh, uh, like uh, behaviors and just try to be ready for them and before that as I told you through the questions in proposal sessions we need to talk about what we like and dislike about our families about the the person's families the person that we are getting to know and clearly talk about all those issues and one of the questions was that if do you expect that someone from your family is going to live with us in the future it's very important because we need we need to be prepared for any uh, you know type of relationship that we uh, we are going to have in the future by existence of someone else from you know our like a spouse family living with us so it's very important to have uh, be prepared for that or and also be clear with our spouse regarding the type of relationships that we want to have with in-laws okay so uh, I hope that I cover everything. There are lots of things to cover in the effective communications, but we need to, I just try to be concise and uh, uh, just select those uh, informations or issues that are really important. And you can use, inshallah, after getting married with your spouse. And uh, just make sure that you have like uh, these four horsemen of apocalypse in mind and try to work on yourself and uh, inshallah in order to have like a, a long lasting relationship and marriage inshallah and a happy life okay I'm done with my slides and if anyone has any questions just please ask Thank you so much for sharing all of your knowledge. And um, for those of you who are listening, feel free to use the chat box or we're a small group so you can take yourself off mute and ask your question directly if you'd like to. And uh, as uh, Sister Zainab said at the beginning, she gonna tell again, inshallah. But uh, if, you, uh, if you think that or you feel that you wanna 
after the the workshop if you want to be uh, connected with me and uh want to have so, like some questions or you want to talk i'm available and willing to help you and have some time together to talk about some of the issues that you need to uh talk about so you uh you have my email address and my phone number so you can just send an email to me or get connected to me uh, via what whatsapp and then we can talk or just at the time and uh, inshallah go through the uh, your concerns inshallah looks like we have one question in the chat box um, mm. so uh, the person is asking is how can you know if you are compatible before you live with a person so it's a good question so one of the reasons that uh, uh, we have all those questions, and I just encourage you to ask those questions. You know, is in order to better to know that person, and you already, I assume that you already through the, all those steps that you took through self identification and and measures, you get to know you got to know yourself, and now through those questions, you're just trying to get to know another other person, the other person, and just make a comparison between your uh, uh, evaluation of yourself and the evaluation of the other person through those questions and just make that you know comparison and to see that how much you are uh, you are compatible with each other the marriage and the all the proposal and you know all those processes that we took before the marriage all is about to see if we are enough compatible or not that's very important issue that uh, we need to spend times we, we don't you know there is no hurry we don't want to go you know just get married just because we want to marry we need to spend times and uh, what I proposed was just at least three months and go through all those questions and more questions even more hundred like a more than hundred questions and try to address all the aspects. Talk about all the issues that you think this is important. Just prioritize the, your expectations or whatever that you think this is important in your future life. And then start asking those questions. And encourage another person also to ask questions. And just have discussion and discussion and discussion. Spend time and you know hours and hours and talk about all those issues to see if you are compatible or not so it doesn't have any way other than uh, spending time and asking questions and getting to know that person so living i think uh, what it is mentioned here like before live with someone so yeah it is the best way to get to know the person and uh, to see if you are compatible or not the best way is living with someone but so like the western culture they uh, they provide that way for themselves like by dating or cohabitation that they live with each other and uh, for like uh, like a five years, seven years, ten years, and then they decide if they are compatible or if they want to get married or not. It, it's a, the way, it's a type of a lifestyle that they have. Like uh, that might not be work, and we have also some obligations and Islamic limitation that do not doesn't let us to do that, like do the co cohabitation. So, but the way that they do. The, if you look at the rate of divorce in in the in the US, it's around like 50 percent. So these are for those relationships, like the marriages, that are like uh, they got certified marriages. They get certification for them. They have like a licensed marriage. There are more than that. That uh, it's like a cohabitation or those relationships that are not certified but they got divorced so the rate is more than that 
and it says 50 percent is too much like uh like it means that one divorce per two marriages so and uh, um so it and and i think it shows that like a living with someone in order to to get to know that person also doesn't work so what i what i think is to spend lots of time and by asking questions it's the key point and is the best way to get to know uh that person did you send an example of what types of question yeah yeah absolutely uh, uh, I think uh, through the email, those questions uh, were sent through the email, and I asked one of the uh, brothers in the Absa network to resend it again, inshallah, after this workshop, and you have all those questions. And uh, through the uh, the last two Q&A sessions, we actually covered all those questions. The last weekend, yesterday, uh, I talked about all those questions and I included 30 questions and uh, also included three links um, including uh, like more than 100 questions and you can go through all those questions and just uh, prioritize your uh, priorities or whatever that you important to you. you the focus you know areas of focus that you have in your life and then um, make that list and uh, like uh, make that list for yourself like uh, tailor that list for yourself uh, yes the questions are in the email you should receive the email all the attendees who registered for this workshop they got an email and a list of questions and a pdf file is has been attached to that email that was sent i guess two weeks ago more than two weeks ago and you should have the email and the list. Um, I'm gonna ask one of the brothers to send it again, inshallah. You have the questions. If you do have any follow-up questions um, for Dr. Kanpur, again, I'll put his contact information into the chat box. Um, for those of you who are um, just listening in and can't see the video, uh, it's S-K-I-A-N P-O-U-R at gmail.com or you can send him a WhatsApp message at 613-617-9550. Um, I see that there's one more question, but I also want to respect everybody's time. Um, Dr. Kianpur, I don't know if you can answer it quickly. And yeah, then yeah, uh, yeah, I can, yeah, I can answer the question. We can, we can continue if anyone has any more questions because this is the last session that we have or and anyone who want to leave they can just leave and uh, uh, there's no obligation you know to stay so uh, so do you support matchmaking groups like uh, when brothers and sisters submit their profiles um, I wouldn't say no like a matchmaking groups so it is one of the ways that the community in the US or in Canada, they just try to uh, provide a way to, you know, to make a pool, to have the profile in the pool. And some people just with the good intention, positive intention, and uh, they're just trying to make, make that, you know, matchmaking try to match those people in the pool and then introduce them together it's a type of uh, like traditionally just one person knew lots of people and in her or his mind just try to do that matchmaking and introduce them together but now it's uh, it's a, like kind of an official way that uh, like a group of people just try to be organized and make a structure and have that pool and include all the profile in the pool and they sit and you know see to if they can match all those together and then introduce them together it's a good way to do but i still um, recommend that type of organic uh, matchmaking like uh, someone like a traditional matchmaking uh, like uh, like specifically it's a woman who's in a, like a, like a middle age or old 
that is well known in the community and everyone goes to her and asks to see if he if she knows like someone that one i guess uh is good too uh, and also through friends and uh uh if anyone like uh like a uh, uh, friend is friend of someone else that is in the you know is ready for to set uh, to to settle down and he or she can introduce that person to other so and uh yeah so but uh yeah so but that type of traditional way also is good too and i kind of pro um uh, that tr traditional matchmaking more than the you know matchmaking groups because uh, b because people are kind of sensitive to the information that they relieve to that group or pool and if that pool leaks there are lots of confidential problems and uh, those who are those who just make that make that pool they need to take serious steps uh to secure that pool you know to do not leaking you know do not allow any leaking from that pool so that's very important issue and because they just try to be you know organized and have a structure they might have like excel shit and they put all the information in excel shit and it's like a technology you know it can be leaked easily and it's information in the hand of thousands of people so and it's very difficult to uh you know to fix it so yeah okay. well thank you so much for answering that question and all the other questions throughout the last um, four sessions inshallah if anyone is interested again you can uh, contact dr kianpur with the information that's in the chat box um, and please make sure that you also continue to um, check absa's website or um, their emails to make sure that you're up to date about all the upcoming programs um, so with that, again, Dr. Kianpur, thank you so much for your time and for your guidance throughout these sessions. And inshallah, we'll continue to have more programs like these to benefit our community. Inshallah. Thank you so much, Mr. Sara, for all the time that you invested in through these four weeks. And we are really uh, like at benef benefits from uh, you here. And uh, inshallah, we're going to have you more in the next uh, couple of programs that inshallah we have. Great. Thank you so much. And inshallah, I hope everybody has a good night. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam.